Greetings and salutations, Geo Nerds. So what are these $130 million shit boxes, which I actually quite like, that shoot $2 million missiles, I might add, right? What do you think they've got to do with full of James Burke here? The world's biggest bogan and this awesome looking gun, which I also noticed is loaded and cocked, which is a bit scary. Let's put it out together. Well, folk, that's a surprise. We're going to start out the Sydney today, just over here, uh, Neutral Bay, under the Kodanga, because we can. Where have we got to go? This way. Oh, that's right. We're going, we got to get a wiggle on. We're going out to a lovely little town called Ningen, across the Blue Mountains and out across the plains, the Liverpool Plains, out to this great little town on the Bogan River. Yes, that's where Bogan gets its name from, the river. And uh, there we are, nice little town, got a race course there, got a nice airport, look, look at that, let's whiz along. Anyway, we're not staying in the town tonight, we're going to whiz out to a place called uh, Honey Jumble. Uh, might be called Honey Gumble. Anyway, uh, this is the site of a Scandium mine, and it's one of the only, it's the only Scandium only mine in the world. Scandium is usually mined as a byproduct of other rare earth metals. But in this particular case, it is not. So let's get into it and find out a bit about Scandium. Well, GNH Scandium, 44.96 atomic weight. There's a few isotopes of this thing, but none of them have any particular use to us. Shiny metal, looks absolutely stunning. Looks a lot like titanium, strangely enough. Looks a lot like uh, a lot of metals. This is one of the medals that this guy, Dimitri Mandelauf, predicted. He said there'd be something between 40 and 48, and this is the and it wasn't found for 10 years later. And here it is, this is on the old periodic table of elephants, Scandium. Here we are. Nice looking bit of gear. It was actually discovered by uh, Nissan Frederick, this guy. Sounds like a car, doesn't it? Japanese taxi. Anyway, um, he discovered it 10 years later, named it after Scandia, the Latin for Scandinavia. This bloke was Swedish. Let's move on and see what this stuff is used for. So when Scandium is alloyed with aluminium, it becomes very strong. Obviously, it's already very light, but it becomes very durable. So the aviation industry eats it up. F-35s, uh, MiG-27s, uh, MiG-29, sorry, SU-27s, and those shitbox AMRAAM missiles, they're all made out of this stuff. And by the by, this is titanium. Our old mate Lars, he discovered this as well. Amazing guy. Anyway, sporting goods, aluminium of course, baseball bats, push bikes, and of course these horrible things, don't get me started. But anyway, all use scandium aluminium alloys but it can also be alloyed with steel. And uh, that's quite a different use. So when you mix scandium with steel, you get a very strong and corrosion resistant metal, such as would be used in these little death machines. Revolvers, semi automatic pistols, specifically made by Smith & Wesson, these ones, but other manufacturers use them for gun parts because it hardens the steel up, it strengthens it up, and it also makes it more ductile. It's also used by the way Scandium is used as a catalyst in certain organic uh, chemical reactions. And it used to be used a lot in the manufacture of filaments for halide lamps, as in, you know, your halogen lamps, etc. Mm, LEDs nowadays, not so much anymore. It's probably still used, but you know, LEDs are going to run that into the ground pretty soon. So we got to the... <laughs> what about Ningen? All right, let's have a look at Ningen. And let's have a look at these mines, because they're interesting. Well, to talk about Ningen, folks, first of all, we've got to talk about a place called Cannon Bar. 
And uh, Cannon Bar was the place. Here it is, here up on Duck Creek. It's about 30 k's north of Ningen. And it was the place because this is where the Cobb and Co coaches went. And uh, here's Cannon Bar in 1888. The town was huge. But when they ran the Rollo line from Dubbo to Burke, it didn't go through Cannon Bar. It went through where Ningen is. So, bye Cannon Bar, here's Ningen. So, um, Thomas Mitchell came through here, our old mate Mitchell, exploring the Bogan River in 1835, and uh, he camped at the site. Aboriginal people were there. The word Ningen, they said revived to a big water pole, which is what it was. Here's the beautiful railway station there now. Um, and the town flourished. It really did. It's got churches and all the things you'd expect. A country town of only 2,000 people, I might add. It's not a particularly big place. But it's a beautiful little country town. And it's in the middle, in the middle of this beautiful fertile plain. And uh, as you can see from this, this place is very fertile. It's been well cleared, <laughs> obviously. There's not a few many trees left. But uh, these are dry weather farmers. They are amazing people. They can grow wheat in places where nowhere else in the world they can grow wheat. They're amazing people. So uh, I think it's got everything, but it's not the average town. You don't often get a helicopter on a stick in the main drag, which this one has from a flood rescue uh, uh, thing. And of course, it's got the world's biggest bogan um, statue. One and, a half, sorry, one and a half tons, five, six metres high, built by the local council. And a few years ago, they gave him a dog. So now he's got a dog. It's probably the world's biggest bogan dog. Who knows? So what's it here for? Well, they grow stuff here. They grow, of course, wheat. We mentioned it briefly. Uh, amazing amounts of wheat. They also grow sorghum, of course. Not really human consumption sorghum, but it's used to make ethanol. It's used to feed cattle, obviously. And they make this stuff, which is beautiful. But, you know. There's been a mistake. You've accidentally given me the food that my food eats. It is, of course, canola. And they grow these things. Tasty little devils they are. And they grow, of course, lots of these things. Even tastier little devils. Um, and that's Ningen, really. Great place. Now we're gonna have a look at the mines. Well, folks, the mines themselves. Well, here we are in the district. Here's Ningen itself with that awesome airport they've got there. Here's the first prospect up top there, the Ningen Prospect. Down the bottom we have the Honey Jumble. Yeah, Honey Gumble. Yeah, we'll go Jumble. Prospect. I've done up a geology map, stuck a couple together here. <coughs> oh, Mr. Hart, what a mess! It's a bit complicated, but uh, there's Ningen, of course. There's the first prospect, and there's uh, the Honey Gumble Prospect down there. They're 40 metres underground. Most of these are surface geologies. They don't show what they're digging into. They're digging into a thing called limonite. Here's the prospect up on Ningen, up on the Barrier Highway. That's going to be the area. To the right-hand side of that's going to be the hole. On the left-hand side, it's going to be the processing plant. Uh, and I've got another uh, image here that shows you that. The yellow circle is the hole where they're going to be open cut. And the blue square is where the processing plant will be. These are fairly large things. This is what it looks like today. Looks a lot like a lot of Western New South Wales. Uh, but look at the colour of the soil. Limonite is an iron compound. That's definitely got iron in it. Here are the boys, my heroes. Drilling rig operators, RC drillers. Don't care what you're doing. If you're drilling holes in Australia, you got my respect. Uh, my son did this for a while and uh, I'm just so proud of him. So here we go, another orange paddock. Uh, that's actually the paddock where it's going to be here. The boys, they'll be out quantifying this. In fact, they've already quantified it. They've drilled hundreds of holes there. They know where this stuff is already and how much of it's there. And uh, that, you'll see a lot of this. <laughs> you see a lot of this around Ningen because there's a lot more mineralisation. There's big copper deposits to the north of Ningen. There's other rare earth deposits around Ningen. This place is going off, let me tell you. Why is it going off? Well, this is our old mate Scandium again. It's as used as a metal by itself almost never but it's used alloyed a lot why are they so keen to get this well gold's worth about this is early 2023 gold's worth about 60 dollars an ounce 61 dollars an ounce platinum 47 dollars an ounce scandium 270 dollars an ounce and it's going up so yeah when they say this shit's like gold no it's way more expensive than gold so that's good good luck boys anyway I've got to run this video out, it's getting long. I tried to keep it to 10 minutes, guys, I really do. 
Thank you to all the new subscribers. You're fantastic. You really, I see you coming on and it really makes my day to see the channel growing the way it is. Thank you very much. And you know what I'm going to say? What country town am I going to pick on next? Mm, let's see. Anyway, keep, keep rocking. T-Rock's out. out.